Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, Finite and Infinite Games, by James P. Kars. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. Finite and Infinite Games, 1986, offers two contrasting viewpoints on how to live your life, whether you're engaging in sexual relationships or warfare. Kars argues that any activity can be seen as either a finite or an infinite game, the former being end-oriented and the latter leading to infinite possibilities. He reveals how the world appears through the eyes of those who play with the finite or infinite in mind, and concludes that how and what games we play are our own choice. Key idea number one, almost everything in life is a game. Hide and seek, truth or dare, and other children's games come to mind. However, adults play too. Adult games are finite or limitless. Time, space, and numbers define finite games. A finite game always has a start, a field, and players. The players must pre-agree on the game's rules due to internal and external constraints. Players compete under these guidelines to win. Game over. Consider a general election if this doesn't sound real. Election laws are clear. A winner is determined by the number of votes on a given day. Vote fraud is prohibited, and each party can only run one candidate. The reverse of finite games are infinite games. Infinite games are played to continue, while finite games are won. Infinite games have no limits. Anyone can play anytime, anywhere. Because fresh composers write inspiring music, there will never be a best symphony. The composer writes music to invite more people to play, not to win. Read on to understand how the finite and infinite players view life. Key idea number two, infinite players have no limits, while finite players do. Finite games have temporal, spatial, and numerical boundaries. Other boundaries are necessary. Imagine an election with two candidates and the winner determined by votes. These regulations would allow two common criminals to run for office and allow daily elections. The audience regulates finite games. The crowd decides when and who plays. The audience chooses the two candidates and the election date in the election example. The finite player must play in the audience's time. The crowd pressures the finite player to finish the game. Exams, a finite game, require players to create answers. She works for the two hours her teacher gave them. Infinite games let players control time. A player in an eternal game doesn't experience time. Each minute offers new game possibilities. Playing fills time for the infinite player. He will work as long as he wants and invite others to help. Key idea number three, infinite players view society as culture. Games require teammates and opponents. However, finite and infinite players view their game differently in reference to others. Finite players view society as one giant finite game with smaller games like school or a profession, where everyone competes for a title. Simply winning a finite game can get this title. For the finite player, a priest is father after completing training and winning the priesthood game. Property displays this title, which society must respect. Imagine attending a prestigious college and becoming a successful lawyer. You can buy an expensive car to represent your achievement. Infinite players differ. They believe civilization evolves. Titles emphasize past victories. Infinite players focus on the future and its potential, therefore these are irrelevant. Thus, infinite players focus on creating a vision that inspires others to join and strive toward it rather than solving a problem. An infinite player wouldn't battle poverty by trying to give a certain amount of commodities. He would rather discuss poverty's origins. Key idea number four, infinite players play to coexist, while finite players win to dominate. From the bedroom to social interactions, finite players want to dominate. Win finite games to control others. They dominate by flashing their titles. This defines their gameplay. Finite players aim to explain and persuade, not discuss. Knowledge wins these cases. Sexual connections help finite players dominate their partners. This may involve disguising their sexual impulses through complex courting practices until a desired end. However, the infinite player simply cares about the game. Infinite players don't worry about showing off because there are no winners. They play to play. Infinite players value listening as much as talking. She views them as a conversation, not an explanation. Infinite players claim nothing. They provide their conversation partner a perspective and are receptive to fresh information. Infinite players don't focus on sexuality's outcomes, whether it's conceiving or having fun. They play to discover themselves and others. Key idea number five, finite players are shaped by their past, while endless players change it. How heavy is your past? Past obsessed finite players must play. Finite play is a game from the past when people gladly play roles set for the past. As a finite player, if you're the eldest son of a wealthy family, you'll protect its property and reputation. Entering a finite game is psychological. 
Players must prove themselves since winning is everything. A finite player obsesses over her past, where she's still a loser, regardless of her record. She wouldn't play a finite game if she wasn't stuck in the past. To prove your classmates incorrect, you may be determined to succeed. Because you feel like a loser, you keep working hard. Infinite players see differently. Uniqueness frees people from the past. Acknowledging their talent and individuality can help them forgive the past. Past is history for endless players. An endless game's future is open-ended and full of possibilities. Being the eldest son of a wealthy family is the start of an unlimited number of games for an infinite player. Key idea number six, you can pick your game and play style. There are many differences between finite and endless games, but you can still play finite games within infinite ones or opt out of them. You can choose your game. Every game is voluntary. Finite players frequently feel compelled to play and play a certain manner. However, no one can make you play. Finite players are selected externally. Lawyers must pass the bar. Lawyers must attend court and meetings to stay in the game. However, no one can make you a lawyer. You can pick a game because we all choose to play and follow the rules. Finite players feel trapped since they must adopt a certain persona to play certain roles. You should be wise and just as a lawyer. Sometimes these masks become too convincing even to ourselves, and we become lost in the game, forgetting that we're just playing a role and can always resign. The lawyer who feels constrained by her duty must realize she can always quit and move to Jamaica. You choose your game. You can play as you choose as long as you don't hide behind masks or fall for others. Life is a finite or infinite game. Infinite players let the game continue and create various possibilities, while finite players focus on winning and losing. And play this game your way. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.